Leader Gaddafi, thank you very much indeed for agreeing to talk with Sky News today. Uh, my first question to you is with regard to Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, whether you have a message for Iran and their weapons of mass destruction program in the light of what Libya did in 2003. Is there a message for Iran about how one nation can go about disarming? Iran, uh, Iran up to now doesn't say, has not said, that it's manufacturing nuclear weapons. Iran says that it's enriching uranium. If Iran were to manufacture nuclear weapons, nuclear arms, then all of us would be against that. But Iran has not said so. But the strange thing is that we have a double standard. Why there's no focus or concentration or talk in the same way for the nuclear reactor, in the same way that there is a focus and attention for what Iran is doing. If Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is determined to have more than a civilian nuclear program, if he really wants to get nuclear weapons, what would your advice to him then be? Our position is clear, and it should be clear and evident, and it's a resolute and clear-cut position that we're against anyone who manufactures, possesses nuclear weapons, whether it's Iran, America, or the Israelis. The question is like this. Why do we make an exception for the Israelis? Because they do have a nuclear program. They do have real arms, nuclear weapons. And the whole world is astonished. The whole world raises the same questions. Why are they accepted? If Iran gets nuclear weapons, then maybe Saudi Arabia gets nuclear weapons, then we have a regional arms race. This is the problem, no? No. If the Israelis have the nuclear weapons and the nuclear capabilities, then it's the right of the Egyptians, all the Syrians and the Saudis to have the same. Even the Palestinians should have the same because their counterparts or their opponents have a nuclear capability. Why not? Even the state of Palestine, when it's established, should have nuclear capabilities because the counterparts, such as the Israeli state, have nuclear capabilities. And if we don't want this situation, so we have to disarm the Israelis from the nuclear weapons and nuclear capabilities. What's our argument against the Egyptians, the Iranians, the Syrians, the Palestinians? We have no argument. All the Saudis. The leader has said that he sees President Barack Obama almost as an African leader. Uh, how did he feel when he heard that President Obama had won the Nobel Peace Prize? It goes about saying he's an African. And we're proud that we Africans, we in the African continent present someone who's an African to be the president of the United States of America. We are proud of that. But as regards the Nobel Peace Prize, I do believe that he deserves it. But to be given right now, in my view, it's some sort of hypocrisy or sycophancy. And I think it's premature. It's not due yet. President Obama told the British that he felt the release of Abdul Basit al-Megrahi was a mistake. It's a matter of concern to the British, Scots and Americans. I mean, we're not really concerned about it. The, the leader feels this is entirely a matter not for Libya, but for the Americans and for the Scottish and the British. Indeed, of course. I was looking at some of the books and I noticed there is the autobiography of Margaret Thatcher on the bookshelves here. I was wondering really which uh, British, modern British leaders he has admiration for. Tony Blair has become my friend. He is my friend. But generally speaking, the world actually has a bankruptcy in the real leadership. Not the same leaders that we had in the old generations or the old leaders. A delegation of British MPs are coming uh, to Libya to discuss the subject of uh, reparations for the time of, of uh, terrorist attacks in Northern Ireland, and I wonder whether the leader has a, has a view on this. To the best of my knowledge, I'm not aware that there is a delegation. That because I'm not really interested, and it does not really concern me, these diplomatic or political delegations, these government delegations, because I'm out of it. 
I believe that an agreement or a legal agreement has been concluded between the two respective countries, Libya and the United Kingdom. Has, has been concluded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to close the chapters of the past and that there will be no chance for any pursuit of legal or previous actions and so on. And so that's that. That is that. And of course, many of those legal chapters are being closed now. There was compensation paid to the victims, the American victims of the Lockerbie bombing. It seems that there is a deal also on Northern Ireland. There is one outstanding issue for many British people, which was the, the shooting outside the Libyan embassy in 1984 of Yvonne Fletcher. And I wonder really whether, sir, you have a, a message for the family of Yvonne Fletcher, who are still seeking justice. Uh, for that police officer who was gunned down. You see, I know in fact that such a thing happened. I mean, I mean, I know that a policewoman was shot and was killed when she was doing her duty and that she's not an enemy to us. And we're sorry all the time. We expressed our sympathy because she was on duty and maybe she was there to protect the Libyan embassy. But this is a problem that, which should be solved. But who did it? That's the question. It's always like a persistent matter. I wonder if the leader could characterize now the state of British-Libyan relations. Very good. Good. What is the basis in years to come for that relationship? We have economic relations and investment relations. British companies, British banks are wanting Libyan investments over there in England. Let me say that the economic relations were good even during the time of Lockerbie between our two countries. They were never affected. Even during the times we had no diplomatic relations with our two respective countries and the United Nations were cut off, British companies were working here in the oil sector. British banks were dealing with the Libyan banks. We had commercial ties. Economic relations never affected, even though we had no diplomatic relations. I very much enjoy looking at the, the leader's shirt with the Africa emblazoned on it. How important a leader within Africa does uh, Brother Gaddafi feel he now is? <laughs> we are part of Africa. Our future, our destiny is in Africa. It's my wish that the Libyan foreign policies will be part and parcel of the total African foreign policies. Even the economy should be one African economy. Should not be African one, then Libyan economic policy. We attach great hope upon the African Union. More that the UK attach hope for the European Union. Leader Gaddafi, thank you very much. Thank you. Shukran.